So Gupta Empire is known as golden age of India. But why? Is it because of their scientific advancement or is it about the development of art and literature during Gupta Empire or was it their architecture or development in medical science? Well, that is what we'll try and find out today. Aryabhat, Brahmago and Kalidas. I'm sure you might have heard their names, but do you know that all of them were during the Gupta Empire? Nalanda University became a prominent center of education, attracting scholars from all around the world. However, it's important to understand how and by whom it was classified as such. In the 17th century, the British arrived in India, primarily for trade. Gradually, the East India Company expanded its presence and influence through diplomatic agreements, eventually gaining significant control over the Indian subcontinent by mid-18th century. To justify their dominance, the British started spreading narratives that quoted them as advanced and superior compared to Indians. They propagated theories like our invasion theory and the idea of defeating the native Dravidians from Western lands. These narratives aimed to establish British supremacy and belittle the Indian people. Unfortunately, some of these conspiracy theories are still believed by some of the people, mistaking them for historical facts. In the 19th century, Indian historians took matters into their own hands and began exploring India's history. They uncovered the greatness of modern empire and the golden age of the Gupta Empire. Hello curious minds, my name is Harry and today we'll explore why Gupta Empire was classified as the golden age by Indian historians. Now, let's look at some of the evidence and findings of these historians that made Gupta Empire the golden age. British were always very proud of their scientific and technological advancements and they used it as an argument to justify the colonization. To counter them, Indian historians highlighted the scientific achievements during Gupta period. The most prominent names were Aryabhat, Varahamira and Brahmagupta. Let's talk about Aryabhat first. Aryabhat's most renowned work is the Aryabhatiya, which are treaties on mathematics and astronomy. It covers a wide range of topics, including arithmetic, algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and celestial calculation. Aryabhat formulated the concept of decimal system, including the use of zero as a placeholder. This groundbreaking concept revolutionized mathematical calculations and laid the foundation of modern numeral systems. He developed a method of calculating square roots and approximation of pi. The mathematical constant representing the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. His approximation of pi was remarkably accurate up to four decimal places. Aryabhat proposed the theory that the earth rotates on its axis and that the apparent movement of celestial bodies is due to earth's rotation. This heliocentric model challenged prevailing geocentric beliefs and demonstrated his understanding of planetary motion. Aryabhat made significant contribution to astronomy. He accurately calculated the duration of a year, the position and movements of celestial bodies, and the occurrence of solar and lunar eclipse. Another renowned scientist was Varahamira. He made notable contributions to mathematics, developing techniques and formulas for solving linear, quadratic, and indeterminate equations. In astronomy, Varahamira composed the Panch Siddhantika, comprehensive treatise that merged five prevalent astronomical systems of that time. His work covered topics like planetary motion, eclipse, and celestial calculations. Varamira's expertise in astrology is evident in his renowned work, the Brihat Samhita, which encompasses astrology, meteorology, architecture, and gemology. He also made advancements in weather forecasting, providing method for predicting rainfall and droughts. Additionally, Varamira's insight into Ayurveda, included in the Brihat Samhita, contributed to traditional Indian medicine. The third scientist was Brahmago. His achievements include formulating of rules for arithmetic equations, like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, as well as developing methods to solve quadratic equations and calculate square roots. Brahmagupta's work extended to algebra, where he introduced the formulas to find the area of geometric shapes. In astronomy, he accurately calculated the length of a year, determined celestial positions, and predicted solar and lunar eclipse. His innovative ideas, including the concept of zero and the Hindu numeral system, revolutionized mathematical calculations. Now, if we talk about medicine, Dhanvantri is known as father of Ayurveda and authored the Dhanvantri Nagantu, an early text on the subject that was compiled during the Gupta period. Dhanvantri had extensive knowledge of human anatomy, physiology, and diseases. He developed surgical techniques, including tumor removal and fracture setting. Dhanvantri emphasized preventive medicine, promoting a balanced lifestyle, proper nutrition, exercise, and hygiene. He's worshipped as the deity of medicine and healing and continues to inspire practitioners of Ayurveda. During Gupta period, we not only see development in mathematics, astronomy, or medicine, but there were great advancements in metallurgy as well. One of the key advancements was in the mastery of iron smelting technique. 
iron became widely available and played a crucial role in daily lives from agriculture to warfare. One of the most mesmerizing example of this is Iron Pillar of Delhi, which stands strong and dress free even today after 1500 years. Copper and bronze metallurgy also experienced significant advancement. Skilled artisans perfected the art of alloying copper with tin and other metals to create bronze a stronger and more durable material. Bronze was extensively used in the manufacturing of statues, sculptures, utensils, and ornaments. Artisans also mastered techniques such as lost wax casting repose and engraving. These techniques allowed for the creation of intricate patterns, motifs and detailing on metal objects. It was during the Gupta period that gold and silver were used to create jewelry. Kalidasa, one of the most respected writers in Indian history, belonged to the Gupta period. He is considered one of the greatest Sanskrit poets and playwriters in Indian history. Kalidasa's work showcased his mastery over language, imagery and emotion. His plays such as Abhijana Shakuntalam and Meg are regarded as classics of Indian literature. Another notable contribution is the Kavya Mala, which brought together works of renowned poets from earlier times. The Kavya Mala includes exquisite works like Raghu Amsa, Kirta Janiya, and Shishu Palvada. These epics and poems beautifully narrate tales of heroic deeds, love, and mythology. Another notable literary compilation is the Panchtantra, a collection of moral tales and fables believed to be written by Vishnu Sharma. These stories, filled with wisdom and wit, continue to educate and entertain readers even today. Also, during the Gupta period, a significant development in Indian literature was the compilation and composition of Puranas. Puranas are a genre of ancient Hindu texts that contain narratives about mythology, legend, genealogies of gods and goddesses, and religious instructions. The Gupta Empire saw the compilation of several important Puranas, which became integral to the religious and cultural fabric of India. One notable compilation is the Vishnu Purana, which highlights the greatness of Lord Vishnu and provides a comprehensive account of creation, cosmology, and genealogy of gods and sages. Another significant compilation is the Shiv Purana, dedicated to Lord Shiva, the destroyer in Hindu trinity. Also, the Markande Puran, named after sage Markande, includes tales of ancient sages, kings, and gods, along with discourses on theology, cosmology, and rituals. The Agni Puran, dedicated to Lord Agni, the god of fire, contains hymns rituals and descriptions of the universe, geography, and astronomy. The compilation of these Puranas during the Gupta period not only preserved ancient history and legends, but also provided a religious framework for the society. The Puranas were written in Sanskrit, a language of scholars and intellectuals in that era. The compilation of Puranas during the Gupta period expanded the body of existing history, mythology, and religious literature. The Gupta style of architecture featured intricate carvings and stone temples, influencing the Nagar style of architecture, which became very prominent in the later times in North India. One remarkable site where the Gupta achievement in art and architecture can be witnessed is the Ajanta Caves in Maharashtra, India. Ajanta Caves, dating from 2nd century BC to 6th century C, showcases a fusion of Gupta and earlier architectural style. The Gupta artisans at Ajanta created stunning frescoes depicting various themes, including Buddhist narratives, royal possessions, and daily life scenes. The vibrant colors used in these fiescos have retained their brilliance over the century. The paintings exhibit a high level of artistic skill with intricate details and nuanced expressions, revealing the refined artistic sensibility of the Gupta Empire. Furthermore, the sculptures at Ajanta depict Buddhist deities, celestial beings, and scenes from the life of Buddha. So, we have talked about achievements in mathematics, astronomy, medicine, art and literature, architecture, metallurgy. But this was a little about the golden age, and there is much more to it. And I'm sure that you're already proud of the Bharat that it was once. If you're interested in knowing more about ancient dynasties and the rich history of the Indian subcontinent, please like the video. And if you're new to the channel, kindly subscribe if you want more content on history.